Uh, I'm Dr Greta Petzl from the University of Tasmania and in the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies. I'm a marine ecologist. We've just completed a study here in the southeast of Australia looking at uh, what are our key fisheries species, our commercial fisheries species that might be more likely to be impacted by climate change. So in the southeast here we have a really high rate of temperature change. We're in what we call an ocean warming hotspot for climate change. We have the warming that most of the rest of the ocean uh, is getting, but we also have a change in current system with our East Australian current. So we have a bit of a double whammy for, for, for warming in the region. We've already seen quite extensive changes in our ecosystem from um, the very small uh, uh, creatures that we have in the ocean right through to the top of the food chain. And what we've tried to do is come up with a, an assessment that um, can rapidly determine which species might be more likely to respond to climate change. So we've come up with a method um, that can very rapidly look at the, con the characteristics of species, whether they produce just a few eggs or hundreds of thousands of eggs, um, if, they are, if they live in a really small uh, latitudinal range or if they are really widely distributed and a whole lot of other factors that um, we've pulled together in an assessment to determine which species we think might be uh, the most sensitive and the most at risk from climate change. Um, and our most sensitive species came out as uh, our two abalone species, green lip and black lip abalone and rock lobster. So what we've done is determine what species on a biological basis um, of all our commercial species are the ones that look like they are the most sensitive and, and coincidentally they are actually our most important commercial species here as well. So the assessment that we've developed here has, has already been applied in other parts of the world that are coincidentally also um, ocean warming hotspots. So a lot of regions having very rapid changes and rather than um, developing really expensive quantitative models on everything in the ecosystem that we, we really do need to have a way of quickly prioritising where we would where we could go in and, and expend more um, concentrated research effort. So it's 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 very important that um, we help other regions like this, I think, identify um, what might be uh, their most sensitive species to give them a bit of uh, forewarning about how things might change down the track so that they can uh, better adapt uh, to some of those changes. Well 2015 I think is going to be a very exciting year research wise uh, for, for this type of work and how we're extending it. So we have the Centre for Marine Socioecology that's a, a joint uh, initiative between CSIRO and the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies that's uh, just started and we'll be extending a lot of the work with this, the uh, sensitivity assessment that we've just done and our work in other ocean warming hotspots around the world in 2015 um, under the banner of the Centre for Marine Socioecology.